So far we have just considered two objects colliding, but there's no reason why we couldn't have three objects involved in the system. So you could have two objects colliding and then one of them moves on and hits a third object and so on. In all the collisions we can apply conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law, and if necessary, impulse equals change in momentum as well. We initially just consider the collision between A and B and we apply conservation linear momentum and Newton's experimental law to create a pair of simultaneous equations with the unknown velocities after the collision. Now that we know the velocity of B after it's collided with A, we know that that's then the initial velocity for its collision with C. And once again, we can apply conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law to create another two equations with two unknowns, which can be solved simultaneously. This is quite an algebraic question, but the mechanics concepts involved are just the same as in previous examples. So we can look at the collision between A and B and apply Newton's experimental law or Newton's law of restitution, and we can also apply conservation of linear momentum. This gives us two equations with two unknowns and will lead us to the fact that U does equal 3V. To find the value of k, we use the fact that u equals 3v and also use the equation 2. We first of all need to consider the collision between b and c and we need to be able to work out the velocity of b. After that collision, we can apply conservation of the momentum and Newton's experimental law to get an expression for the velocity of B after this collision between B and C. Because A is at rest, the only way that B can have another collision with A is if B has reversed its direction. So we can assume that VB has to be less than zero for a second collision and then find that this actually cannot occur due to the value of E that is generated. We can first of all consider the collision between A and B and use conservation of linear momentum to get an expression for the velocity of A after the collision. And then we can apply Newton's law of restitution to work out the value of E. Here we're given the value of the impulse that the wall exerts on B, so we can use the fact that impulse is changing momentum to get an expression for the velocity which the object comes away from the wall at, and then we can use Newton's law of restitution to be able to work out the value of E.